two straightforward lists. I want you to think about this. Two straightforward lists. When I have conversations, coming back to where we're at on this, as Jesus followers, we pay attention to the conversations we're having. As I go to those conversations, we bring things with us. We bring things with us. And we can bring a list of what not to do. I can bring hostility to that conversation. Do you think I'm gonna get to a healing place? No. Quarreling, oh, I can't wait to get into it with them. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I don't think that's gonna go over well. I can bring jealousy to the conversation. I don't think that's gonna help me. I could bring outbursts of anger. Oh, that's gonna be really helpful. How about selfish ambition? I'm gonna get what I want, but I don't care what you want. I could bring dissension, division. Oh, I can't wait to divide you out, throw you away, get rid of you. I could bring envy and I could work my motive of envy in this conversation to write you out of it so that I get something. I can bring sarcasm. I can be jaded. I'll tell you what, a person who's bringing these things knowingly to the conversation is like somebody being asked, hey, you're gonna go have that really tough conversation with your uh, son-in-law? Yeah, gonna go do it. How about that guy at work? Oh yeah. How about your sister-in-law? Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. Well, what are you gonna take with you? Well, what I'm gonna bring I thought long and hard about this. I've got a really cool uh, toolkit. It's gonna be very helpful. I have a box of hammers, and these hammers are gonna help me get exactly what I want. This is gonna build the healthy thing of a resolved relationship that I want. Does anybody believe that? No, but that's what we keep doing. We keep doubling down on these things. This is what you and I are being told to do every single day. And Jesus says, I think we ought to come on over to this list. You're not gonna build what you want. When you're in the conversations with people, when you and I bring this jealousy and outbursts of anger, and we bring our sarcasm and our jadedness, and we leave the hope of what God could do in a person's life behind, we just leave it behind, we don't bring it to the conversation very little, if anything, will ever be accomplished. It's like inviting somebody out to be a part, but them knowing that you really don't want them there. They're not gonna come. And you can say, well, I don't think they're gonna respond. What if God did that to you? If he had done that to me, I would have never reached out to him first. The scripture said, I love him because he loved me first. And anything that happens after that is a response to the goodness of God. And then God is my witness. He is my example that I follow. Oh yeah, the church has a voice in this generation. We've got a voice that is resounding. Oh yeah, we can step into this gap. We have every right to be in the conversations that bring unity and healing back into our generation. We have every right to be there and we have the tools to do it. But these hammers are not going to allow it. Jesus didn't come with hammers. I'll tell you what Jesus brought. He said, now oh, we got something else going on here. How about some refreshing water? for this conversation, meaning I wanna say some things that are gonna be refreshing, things that you didn't expect, and you're gonna love it. It's gonna be different than you thought, and it's actually gonna be quite soothing for you. And I've got some other things that are healthy, and you may not want all this fruit like a teenager that says, I'm not eating that. At some point, we all realize, this stuff's good for me. And I remember who offered it. It's been seven years and I wonder, are they still offering it? I know who to call. I think of a gentleman who gave his heart to Christ here years ago. He literally came because he had, had, a, he had worked with a lady here in our church. He actually started asking God questions after living a life full of this. He would tell you this is exactly who he was. He said, I started asking God questions and I tried to think, who do I know? that knows God, and he remembered Connie. He literally called her after not having seen her for two and a half years, she had retired. And he called her and he said, I remember you, will you help me? I have questions. She brought him to church, they had conversations, he gave his heart to Jesus. He's now passed away, 
but not after doing some amazing things in his life and offering this same invitation, these same good things to an estranged father, an estranged brother. God did some good things. Guys, this is the opportunity we get to have. God wants us to step into these moments and do some amazing things, but only if we'll know which conversation we're in and only if we know what we are meant to bring to the conversation. 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16, instead, worship Christ as Jesus, as your Lord. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, he says, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way, keeping your conscience clear. Oh, it's beautiful. There was a memorial here on Wednesday, Pat Leatherman. For an hour and 40 minutes, we all sat and we listened to stories of a woman, let's go back to that slide, that lived this. And there were opportunities for this, and we heard about those too. And we heard how she didn't bring the hammer, she put him down. And she chose this, the refreshing water. And at the end of her life, as we all sat and listened and celebrated a life well lived, these are the things that people remembered. And there were people in that setting that were actually thinking about life choices that day because they told us about it. This is the life we get to live. What an incredible invitation it is, yeah? It's an incredible invitation that we get to have.